Do you ever get like worried when we bag of wine that no one will buy it? I don't get worried about no one buying it. It'll look after itself there, but I do worry a little bit about the winemaker's reaction sometimes. <laughs> but then I'm like, well, they can talk to Brendan and, and the boys. That's not my problem. I just, I just sent a wine. I did my bit. Uh, g'day, I'm Tom Hollings. I'm the co-founder of Different Drop. What's your, in, in Different Drop, what's your role? Uh, my role is to taste the wines, mate, and drink the wines, basically. No, no, so I'm uh, founded Different Drop with uh, my best mate um, in a garage, what, 11, 12 years ago now. And uh, my business partner, Brett, does the actual work that matters. He's uh, organising our delivery and logistics and operations and technology. And I just pick great wines and, and work with great wineries to, to put their wines on our website and make them available for everyone. What are you doing here today? Uh, I'm here today. Well, I'm a bit scared about today and what today involves, to be honest. I reckon you guys are going to stitch me up a little bit. But no, I'm in uh, the Adelaide Hills. Uh, and Barossa just for a few days to visit some of our partner wineries and, and some of our good mates down here that we work closely with and uh, any excuse to get away from the actual work back in Sydney. No doubt. And you usually actually are the person who puts together the brackets for us. Correct. So every time we, you know, go, oh, okay, so we've got to taste it's old world or new world, you're the bloke who's picking whether it's old world. Yes. You're picking those brackets. I'm, I'm picking the themes. There's a lot of uh, care and thought, mate, that goes into well, those brackets. Yeah. I like to try and come up with some little angles and, and themes there to, to stump you, but you're doing pretty well. I gotta say, Henry, in particular, your uh, palate is improving out of sight. Yeah. Noah, Noah wanks on a bit, and Brendan we know, but but you're doing well, mate. We've obviously got three hosts on our channel. We've got three wines here, and we've sort of got one wine that kind of represents each of the hosts. And aside from just tasting the wine, talking about it, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, I want you to try and pick which one of these wines is Henry's wine, which is Brendan's, and which is Noah's. Oh, I like that, I like that, okay. Yeah. I, I accept the challenge. Beautiful. First appearance is it appears to be a white wine. Mm. Nice nose, like quite fruit forward, I feel. Quite tropical, into that kind of stone fruity peach kind of territory. Oh, that adds a, a different dimension, doesn't it? Trying to pick which one of you guys have picked the wines. Mm. First things first, this is delicious. It's really tasty, got plenty of body. I'm not picking up uh, a great deal of oak. Um, it seems to be you know, a, a, a fruit forward, riper white variety. There's a little bit of a phenolic kind of grip on the finish, which suggests maybe a, a touch of skin contact or something just adding interest. It feels pretty new world to me. Like it's pretty, it's pretty fruity and generous and ripe. It feels like it might be Australian. Do you reckon it's a wine that you sell? <laughs> uh, well, it's a good wine, so by definition, there's a good chance that we would sell this because I think it's good. It does taste familiar. I, I think our, our range kind of reflects my, my palate and what I like to drink a fair bit, which is a bit of everything. Um, definitely not um, pigeonholed into any particular um, styles or categories. Um, we're definitely all about exploration. So the, the common theme in the wines that that we buy and sell though is that they all come from smaller producers. And that's our passion, is working with smaller artisanal producers, uh, people doing things a bit differently, looking at new grape varieties, new regions, new winemaking styles, a bit like Unicozella, of course. And stylistically, I love textural whites, I love light crunchy reds, um, but I'm, I'm drinking different wines every night. But there's a really nice kind of saltiness and a little chalkiness to this wine as well in the finish that, that I really like. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's a, um, it's a Fiano, Australian Fiano. And I say Fiano because Fiano, I love that it gives you this ripeness and generosity of fruit, uh, but you do get that kind of waxy texture as well and that little bit of um, phenolics. Uh, who picked it? If I'm playing the man here, then um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Brendan because he is the Fiano man, the self self proclaimed Fiano man. Um, so I'm gonna guess Brendan has picked an uh, Australian Fiano for me to taste. How close were we? What's wine number one? It was 60. Oh. Uh, it wasn't the one that I chose. <laughs> who was it that chose this one? This is a Noel wine. It's a Noel wine. Uh, it is none it's other coming. than a channel favourite. <laughs> of Edge, course it's Dr. Edge, Tazzy Shard. Oh. oh, stumped. I see it though now because it doesn't have. I love Dredgy Chardonnays. Firstly, just start on, on Peter Dredge, the man, the legend. Um, great mate of ours at Different Drop and we love the wines, which is why I keep sending them in for you guys to taste because uh, I just love the wines. His style of Chardonnay, not overt oak, it's all about fruit and, and, and purity. Uh, and you see that in this, definitely. Uh, and that kind of chalky, you know, phenolic kind of finish is, is a pretty classic thing with Dredgy's wine making. So in hindsight, I see it. But hey, I was right with Australia. I got something. Have you noticed any sort of changes in people's drinking habits since you've started selling booze to where you're at now? Like, do you reckon there's been much of a change in the market? 
Yeah, definitely. I think I've, we've seen a couple different changes. Like when we started Different Job, and, and you know, we were working with with Brendan and Laura from the very beginning, and they were one of the first wineries to actually look at you know alternative grape varieties, Nero d'Avola, Fiano, etc. Um, and and we were really keen on that on that um, topic as well. And then over the years that followed that, that kind of exploded. So I think it was pretty unusual for people to try a Vermentino or you know a Gamay or something a decade ago. Um, these days, that's pretty. That's the norm. One of the other swings we've seen, you know, natural wines were very popular. Pet nats, skin contact wines, and they still are. But I think the the consumer has probably become a little bit more picky with the wines they want to drink as well. They want wines that are clean, no faults, delicious, well priced, um, and then just um, a few of the classic varieties as well have changed over the years. So, you know, Chardonnay has become you know re resurgent and, and a really lovely pure style. Um, Shiraz has become more elegant and, and spicy. Um, Cabernet is kind of flirting with making a comeback as well. Um, Riesling, people are looking for more texture. So there's all these kind of trends that are always happening. Uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, wine number two. I'm zero from one. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> Yeah. All right, first, first things first, light and colour. So uh, I'm not I'm not sensing that this is Shiraz or Cabernet or you know Merlot. Well, that'd be pretty funny to give me Merlot. Oh, beautiful nose. Really, really beautiful perfume. Really elegant, subtle, floral. This is my type of red wine. I love this. So light, light bodied, light to medium bodied, really silky and velvety. Feels to me like there might be a little bit of um, whole berry in that, um, like carbonic maceration being the technique. And the reason for that, you see this lovely bright pop of fruit aromatically, but also the texture is really silky and smooth. Um, there's no harsh edges, it's not too dry. Uh, it's a style of red wine that I just love. The varieties that works well with, Gamay, Grenache, you can see that as well. You know, maybe Sangiovese, but it doesn't have the, the tannins, the dryness that you might see from, from Sang. I love this, I just wanna sit and drink this wine. This is great. Cool. It could be Pinot. <laughs> it could be Pinot. Everything could be Pinot. Oh. <laughs> Could be Pinot. Um, what is it? What is it about wine that like we were at dinner last night? And you were talking about like oh, it's wine over everything else. What is it about wine over other consumables that like you're sitting here shooting videos with strangers? You wouldn't do this with other things. I do this what? all the time, actually. Just yeah. Just, 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 <laughs> but why wine? Why do I love wine? Yeah. Um, so I didn't come from like a wine background. I, I, I fell into wine as a teenager. I got a bottle shop job. Um, got interested in learning about all the different styles, uh, and then I, I uh, accidentally applied for a telemarketing marketing job selling wine on the phone. Uh, and on the very first day I was, I was there, uh, Bruce Tyrrell walked through the door. So winemaking legend from the Hunter Valley and knows Tyrrell's wines, Bruce is a legend. And uh, he was showing us, he brought a brand new Vatwan Semillon, which is one of the most iconic white wines in Australia. Uh, and famously like austere and sharp as a young wine, like almost undrinkable. And he brought the brand new release, which I think was like 2011. So it was like a 20, something like that. No, it would have been younger, 2008. So a washout. So like battery acid. And then he brought a really old one to taste. And I remember that moment of seeing this wine, what it looked like 10 years apart, seeing how it can change, meeting Bruce, hearing all the stories, getting that connection to the place and the people. Uh, and I was hooked and I just loved it. Um, so I think wine has this amazing ability to, it's a drink, it's a delicious drink and there's lots of delicious drinks. But for me, what I love about wine is it can tell a story in the glass. It can connect you to you know a season, it can connect you to a place. And people talk about terroir and vineyards. But for me, what's really, really special is it can, the way it can connect you to people. Uh, and that's what I love about wine. How much do you reckon that one's worth? You know what, I'm gonna guess the magic number, $38. <laughs> I've, I do watch your content, believe it or not, guys. Thirty-eight, thirty-eight dollar, and I'm in, I'm in Grenache, Grenache land. It could be a few things, but I love Grenache. I know you guys love Grenache. I'm in Grenache land. McLaren Vale Grenache, um, thirty-eight bucks, and who picked it? I'm going to say. Mr. Henry Doyle. Well, you got a couple of things right there. You've you, you, you ticked up here. Um, this, is, this is the wine that I've chosen. It is indeed $38. Um, and it's actually- It's the, the number 30 38! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm a salesperson. I'm always gonna put stuff in the in the channel. Uh, How good's that? Yeah, so that's Magic 38. I didn't think this was that good. Yeah. <laughs> last, time, last time I tasted it. Yeah. And, and we're selling it too. Yeah. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah, so that's a- It's, it's Shiraz, isn't it's it? It's Shiraz. First thing God. right off the list.
Gotta say, no, I do, I do like this wine. I have tried this wine before, it's delicious. But um, it seems to have really settled into itself in the last few months, I reckon, hey, like it was pretty uh, energetic and bouncy when it was mm. first released, and that's just now silky as. Uh, amazing though how, um, for Shiraz, I said, the first thing I said is, oh, it's not Shiraz, because mm. it's so red-fruited, isn't it, Bruno? Like, it's so, like, pretty and, and bright, um, in that crunchy style that uh, I know you guys are going for. So, well done. I got a couple things, at least. <laughs> yeah. The magic number. I reckon that almost counts. <laughs> What's the thing that you're like, if everyone understood this, the world would be a slightly better place? Like something that you don't understand, either whether it's customers or winemakers, someone that's just, you know, why aren't we buying more of this? Why aren't we drinking that? To me, it's not, it's not a, it's not a what, it's like a how. It's not, I mean, there are so many different regions, variety styles, and they change, and it's also just people's preference. So it's not one particular thing. It's it's the how we how we communicate about wine. You know, it is just a drink at the end of the day. It should be fun, it should be accessible. But that connection to people, I think, is what makes wine really special and different from other drinks. And I think we forget that sometimes. We, we concentrate on a pretty label. We constantly, you know, in the trade, we talk about winemaking techniques and soils and vineyards, and that stuff's cool and important. But what, what makes it magical is the people and I think as an industry if we were better at understanding about how to connect with people how to do it at scale um, you know using all the tools that we have now like like what you guys are doing I think that's the opportunity for us to reach you know new demographic and for producers to to you know be sustainable in their businesses is to understand how to get their message across and and why they do what they do because you talk to them and it's amazing and the passion and then by the time it gets to the end user, they don't get it. They just see a bottle on a shelf. So how do we as an industry inspire people and excite them about these products and what makes wine amazing? I liked it. Number three. Wine three. Okay, so this is dark. It looks like it's got a bit of age. So I know now this is Brendan's wine, which is interesting. This has this kind of like classic Aussie old school sort of feel to it to me at first at first glance. Like it definitely showing some age. Looks like a more full punchy sort of red in the Shiraz Cabernet sort of zone. Oh, this is confusing now. This is Brendan. This is really confusing. Jeez, it drinks really well. It drinks really well. It's definitely got some age. I reckon this is five to eight years old, maybe. Or if it's older, it's looking still quite fresh. But you can see, you know, around the edges there, it's a little bit of brown. Definitely, definitely showing a little bit of those secondary characters as well from, from great aged red wine. But there's still a real brightness and freshness to this. Oh, now I'm wondering whether this might be like an early Unico wine or something. That would be kind of cool. I think I'm overthinking it. <laughs> so while you're tasting that, tell us how do you go about choosing the brackets that you send to it? It's getting more and more challenging. I'll, I'll say that to choose the brackets because we've gone through a few different areas. So I, I'm trying to think about what's going to make what's well, gonna make good content, you know? So what? try and give you guys some stuff that, that is recognizable that you can get, a couple curveballs, uh, and trying to come up with, with a theme and some kind of, you know, guessing component to gamify things a bit. So no, I just kind of, what I tend to do actually is look look through our kind of website, and just look through our thousands of wines that we sell and, and until I get some ideas, like something pokes out, I go, oh, it'd be great to show them. It'd be really fun to pour that, you know, Sicilian frappato or something, you know, that would be a cool wine. And then go, okay, well then what, what can I work around with that? Maybe I'll do like, a, you know, natural wines of Italy kind of bracket or something, and then you see what else is there. So there's a bit of that. And then also Lockie's there going, mate, I need these wines quickly and I just have to rush and get something out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get like worried when we shit bag a wine that no one will buy it? I don't get worried about no one buying it. It'll look after itself there, but I do worry a little bit about the winemaker's reaction sometimes. <laughs> but then I'm like, well, they can talk to Brendan and, and the boys. That's not my problem. I just I just sent a wine. I did my bit. But no, I think at the end of the day, you just gotta you gotta put stuff out there and give your honest thoughts, right? And so where are we going? We're going Nebbiolo. We're going, and he loves Aussie. He, he loves Australian. So let, let's go. Let's go. Nebbiolo, uh, Adelaide Hills. Nebbiolo, eight to ten years old, uh, and price. Let's go fifty bucks a bottle. I'll tell you this, mate. It's fifty bucks a bottle. Hey, I got something. I got something on each of them. It's Adelaide Hills. <laughs> it is Nebbiolo, and it is sixteen years old. Oh, the Arivo. Wow. Look at that, special bottle. So, thank you for opening that. What, what, what a special wine. Uh, pretty close, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's a pretty good guess. <sighs> it just didn't have, like, you know what it was as well though, like the tannin was was clear, but it didn't have the um, the Shiraz or Cabernet kind of richness of, of mid-palate. It still had that nice translucency to, to the palate, which is very like Italian variety. Beautiful, great. Lovely trio wines. Have you 
you got anything that you'd like to tell the people about? You got anything you'd like to plug? No, just keep keep uh, keep keep supporting great Australian uh, wineries. Um, look, we, we sell wine from all over the world, but our passion is is very much um, local here as well. Keep supporting the boys' channel. We have our own YouTube channel. There you go. There's a plug. Jump over to the different drop YouTube channel. We talk to lots of great winemakers. Um, it's not as flush as these guys, but you know we get some good characters on there. Um, no, thanks for having us, boys. It's good fun. Thanks for coming through, man. All right. Good job. Great. Thanks, guys. Cheers.